Hey guys, Matt Barchmere from Warrior Fitness and Health, and I coach busy people to create fitter and healthier lifestyles via my boot camps, my personal training, and my nutrition. And I do that face to face, but at this moment in time during Corona, I am doing it all online. In this video, I am going to talk to you about my top five tips for training effectively at home. So in the last video, I'll give you my top five tips for training at home. This is now to build on that and how I can get you and I can help you train effectively at home. If you didn't see the previous video, message me, say, Matt, where's this video? I can't find it and I will send you a link to it. However, let's build on this training effectively at home. So you're out your normal exercise routine, you've got to train at home for whatever reason, you're missing the environment of the gym and the same room in the gym class and the boot camp and you're missing the community of your coach and your exercise friends and your fellow boot campers and gym class goers. You haven't got quite got the skill that you need to build effective training sessions at home and there's dis distractions at home, there's partners, there's kids, there's working at home, there's... Uh, Maybe a small training area, maybe there's different noises and that sort of stuff and young children. Here's my top five tips for getting you training effectively at home. Tip number one, there is a minimum dose for exercise, just like there is a minimum dose of medication. So to make sure you are effective during your exercise, you need to be making sure you are hitting the minimum requirement. That is 150 minutes of moderate cardio per week or 75 minutes of aggressive or vigorous cardio. It's two to three whole body, body weight or resistance exercise sessions per week where you're stimulating every single muscle of the body two to three times per week. Stretching two to three times per week ideally five to seven. So tip number one in exercising effectively is making sure you're hitting your minimum dose. 150 minutes of moderate cardio exercise. Two to three whole body resistance, body weight or weighted sessions. Two to three or ideally five to seven stretching sessions. Tip number two, record your workouts. So for my PT clients, you will know I am massive on this. Record what you do. How many press-ups do you do? How long do you skip for? How long are your rest periods? How much do you lift? How many times? This serves one purpose. One, it gives you a psychological pat on the back. Look at all I've done. End of session, pat on the back. The main reason. Next session, you need, you need to know what you've got to do to improve on the last session because training efficiently is doing things a little bit better or doing more than you did last time. And the only way you can do that is record your workouts. Tip number three, I want you to monitor your between exercise rest periods. So what do I mean by that? I do 25 press-ups and then... I rest for 30 seconds. I then do some more press-ups. I then rest for 30 seconds. I need to make sure that the next time I do that session, when I've done my 25 press-ups, I start a timer or start a timer on my phone and I'm resting for 30 seconds because if my rest periods are inconsistent, they're dropping down to 15 or 20 or they're going up to 50 or 60, that changes the training exercise because from a PT and a coach's point of view there are two main factors what we do how long it takes to do them in call incorporating the rest periods I want you to see your in-between exercise rest periods as cooking time in the oven so you will know if you put some Yorkshire puddings in the oven they will take X amount of minutes if you have the mixture the same, if you have the temperature the same and you put them in the oven for the same, you will get the perfect Yorkshire pudding every time. You mess about with one of them free and things can go very wrong. Monitor your in-between exercise rest periods. So, tip number four, training at home. You may have limited kit, no problem. Use bottles, use tins, use bricks, use filled buckets, use sand bags. 
Use chairs instead of benches, use steps, use stairs, use what you can to keep consistent. It's dead easy to go, haven't got the same kit here, I'm not in the same environment, I'm not with the same group of people, I'm not gonna do anything. Well, if exercise is that important to you, you will get creative. So if firstly, tip number four is split into a couple of sections really. If you haven't got the kit, get creative. Use bottles, use tins, use bricks, use buckets, butternut squash, whatever you need to use. Part two of tip number four is if you haven't got weights heavy enough and you need to up your resistance, you need to do some advanced training styles like giant sets, supersets, ascending pyramids, descending pyramids, all that sort of stuff. If you've got no idea what I'm talking about there, you need to speak to your PT, you need to speak to a coach. If you haven't got one, message me and I will help you design a session. Tip number five, you've got to focus on your recovery in between training sessions. Now, this is different to rest between exercises. I'm now talking about recovery between training days. So if I train on a Monday and a Tuesday, what happens the 24 hours before tra uh, between training sessions is really important. Is my sleep on point? Am I getting the right amount? Am I getting the right quality? Is my nutrition on point? Are my calories where they should be? Is my protein where it should be? Hydration, am I drinking the correct amount of water at the correct times? Is stress reduced in my life? Am I getting maybe some naps in the day? Or all these things that contribute to healing your body from the last training session to getting you set up for the next one. So there's my top five tips. Let's do a quick summary. There's a minimal effective dose for exercise. It's 150 minutes of moderate cardio for the old heart and lungs, the old ticker. Okay, two to three resistance body weight sessions per week, two to three or ideally five to seven stretching sessions per week. You need to record your workout so you know what you need to do next time and try and do a little bit more than you did last time. I want you to monitor your between exercise rest periods. If it's 30 seconds, make sure your time is so it's always 30 seconds. I want you to focus on getting creative with your kit. Buckets, bricks, butternut squash, bottles, tins, something like that. And if you haven't got enough weight, you're gonna have to use some advanced training techniques where you need to ask your PT, your coach, or come to me and I will give you some pointers. And you need to make sure your rest and recovery in between training sessions is absolutely on point to make sure you are training effectively at home. So if you're interested in training at home, if you're interested in Warrior Online Boot Camps, online personal training, online nutrition consultations, drop me a message, inbox me, say, Matt, tell me about this and we will start the conversation off. If you think this free content is of any use to anyone, there's two things. Press the like button, share, tag somebody in, or just share it on your timeline so we can get as many people in the local area as fit and healthy as possible. That's it for me. I will see you on the next vlog. I love you all loads and I'll see you soon.